On September 15, 2008, Lehman Brothers, the fourth largest investment bank in the world, declared bankruptcy, sparking chaos in the financial markets and nearly bringing down the global economy. It was the largest bankruptcy in history, larger than General Motors, Washington Mutual, Enron, and WorldCom combined. The federal bankruptcy court appointed Anton Volukas, a prominent Chicago lawyer and former United States attorney, to conduct an investigation to determine what happened. Included in the nine-volume, 2,200-page report was the finding that there was enough evidence for a prosecutor to bring a case against top Lehman officials and one of the nation's top accounting firms for misleading government regulators and investors. That was two years ago and there have been no prosecutions. Anton Volukas has never given an interview about his report until now. The story will continue in a moment. This is the largest bankruptcy in the world. What were the effects? The effects were the financial disaster that we are living our way through right now. And who got hurt? Everybody got hurt. The entire economy has suffered from the fall of Lehman Brothers. So, the whole world? Yes, the whole world. When Lehman Brothers collapsed, 26,000 employees lost their jobs and millions of investors lost all or almost all of their money, triggering a chain reaction that produced the worst financial crisis and economic downturn in 70 years. Anton Volukas' job was to provide the bankruptcy court with accurate, reliable information that the judges could use to resolve the claims of creditors picking over Lehman's corpse. Had you ever done anything like this before? I've never done anything like Lehman Brothers, and I don't think anybody else has ever done anything like Lehman Brothers. So your job, I mean, in some ways, your job was to assess blame. Our job is to determine what actually happened. Put the cards face up on the table and let everybody see what the facts truly are. Volukas' team spent a year and a half interviewing hundreds of former employees and pouring over 34 million documents. They told of how Lehman bought up huge amounts of real estate that it couldn't unload when the market went south, how it had borrowed $44 for every one it had in the bank to finance the deals, and how Lehman executives manipulated balance sheets and financial reports when investors began losing confidence and competitors closed in. Did these quarterly reports represent to investors a fair, accurate picture of the company's financial condition? In our opinion, they did not. I mean, isn't that against the law? It certainly, in our opinion, was against uh, civil law, if you will. There were colorable claims that this was a fraud, yes. By colorable claims, Volucas means there is sufficient evidence for the Justice Department or the Securities and Exchange Commission to bring charges against top Lehman executives, including CEO Richard Fold, for overseeing and certifying misleading financial statements, and against Lehman's accountant, Ernst & Young, for failing to challenge Lehman's numbers. They'd fudge the numbers. They would move what turned out to be approximately $50 billion of assets from the United States to the United Kingdom, just before they printed their financial statements. And a week or so after the financial statements had been distributed to the public, that $50 billion would reappear here in the United States, back on the books in the United States. In the next financial statement, they would move it overseas again and file their report and then move it back. Right. It sounds like a shell game. It was a shell game. It was a gimmick. Lehman misused an accounting trick called Repo 105 to temporarily remove the $50 billion from its ledgers to make it look as though it was reducing its dependency on borrowed money and was drawing down its debt. Lehman never told investors or regulators about it. This is really deception to make the company look healthier than it was. Yes. Deliberate? Yes. How are you so sure of that? Because we read the emails in which we observed people saying that they were doing it. We interviewed the witnesses who wrote those emails or some of those emails and asked them why they were doing it. And they told us they were doing it for purposes of affecting the numbers. Do you think Lehman executives knew that this was wrong? For some of them, certainly. There were concerns being expressed by, at, at high levels about whether this is appropriate, what happens if the street finds out about it. So you know, there was a concern that there's a real question about whether we can do this or whether this was right or not. One of those people was Matthew Lee, who had been a senior executive at Lehman and the accountant responsible for its global balance sheet. Lee was one of the first to raise objections inside Lehman about the accounting trick known as Repo 105. 
sounded like a rat poison, Repo 105, when I first heard it. Um, so I investigated um, what it was, and I didn't like what I saw. Was there a point in which you saw the accounting principles employed by Lehman Brothers change? November 30th, 2007 was the end of our fiscal year, and I fully expected us you know, to make a loss that year, like everyone else. Um, and when I saw we made money, it was a record year, in fact, I thought, that doesn't sound right. You knew the markets were doing badly, so why wasn't Lehman doing badly? And every time I found something and I went to my boss or whoever, no response. That was 10 months before Lehman Brothers went bankrupt. Lee's position required him to sign off on the accuracy of the firm's accounting practices every quarter. But in November of 2007, he declined to do it. By refusing to sign it, you were saying that you didn't believe the numbers. Correct. That this wasn't a fair and accurate representation of the financial condition of Lehman Brothers. Right. Something's up here. Why can't people answer my questions? You know, why has Repo 105 doubled? Give me an answer. Uh, no, you know, nothing was said. Lee continued to press people for more information, but nothing changed. And four months before Lehman collapsed, he sent this letter to Lehman's top executives. I've been telling you all year, I've been banging my head against the wall. I'm now putting it in writing. It says it requires me to bring to the attention of management conduct and actions on the part of the firm that I consider to be possibly unethical and unlawful. Yeah. What were you talking about specifically? Well, in that particular letter, I was general. There were so many specifics, I could have written laundry lists. What kind of a response did you get from this letter? It was like throwing a grenade. I wanted to wake somebody up, at least to address the topics. It worked. Six days after he sent that letter, Matthew Lee was downsized, let go after 14 years. But Lehman executives couldn't ignore the letter and asked their accountants from Ernst & Young to interview Matthew Lee. And in those interviews, we have the notes uh, which are part of the report. He says very specifically, $50 billion repo transactions moving money off the balance sheet at quarter end. So our conclusion was Ernst & Young certainly knew it as of that time and did nothing with it. Volucas says Ernst & Young was legally bound to make sure that Lehman's audit committee and its board of directors knew about Lee's allegations of unethical and unlawful accounting practices, but they never did. Did the audit committee know? No. Did the board of directors know? No. Did Dick Fold know? Did Dick Fold know? Well, he says no. The only place Lehman CEO Richard Fold has publicly answered questions about his firm's bankruptcy has been in front of Congress. I have absolutely no recollection whatsoever of hearing anything about or seeing documents related to Repo 105 transactions while I was the CEO of Lehman. He said the same thing to me face to face. Do you believe him? There was evidence which would show that that's not accurate the president of, of Lehman Brothers told us that in fact he had conversations with Dick Folt about this and documents were shared with him which would reflect the Repo 105 transactions and how they were being used. Richard Folt's view on that was that he has no knowledge of it. You have other evidence that he did. A jury would have to decide who's telling the truth. But so far there's been no jury to hear the evidence. Despite the Lucas's findings and the supporting documents and testimony to back them up, the Securities and Exchange Commission has not brought any charges of any kind against former Lehman executives. For the past few months, we've made numerous requests to interview the SEC's head of enforcement. All of those requests have been declined. The Securities and Exchange Commission has not brought a case? No, they have not. Does that bother you? I'm not permitted to be bothered by that. I'm, you know, my job was to set out the facts, lay it out, they have to make their own prosecutive decisions. There is one plausible explanation why the SEC hasn't gone after top Lehman executives. As it turns out, some of Lehman's most egregious accounting shenanigans took place right under the noses of government regulators. How closely was the SEC monitoring Lehman Brothers during this time? They were on premises. They were talking to the Lehman people daily. They officed there. It was not widely known at the time, but during the last six months of Lehman's existence, teams of officials from the SEC and the Federal Reserve took up residence inside the firm to monitor its precarious financial situation. 
They were inside the building when Matthew Lee wrote his letter to Lehman executives alleging unlawful accounting practices, and they were there when the practices took place. Baluka says the SEC also knew that Lehman was being less than truthful when it said that it had enough assets to survive the crisis. But that and other damaging information was never disclosed to investors, who continued to pump billions of dollars into the firm. Should it have been disclosed? Absolutely. Isn't the government, the SEC in this case, the, the people who are supposed to protect the investors? Yes. Aren't they charged with informing investors? Yes. Why didn't they do it? They may not have had the expertise necessary to understand the material they were receiving. They were getting the material, whether they understood it is another question. The very fact that government regulators were inside the company with access to its books and records would complicate any prosecution of Lehman officials. Until four months ago, David Kotz was the SEC's inspector general. Over the previous four years, he'd issued more than 100 reports about major deficiencies in the way the SEC did its job. If the SEC knew about some of these problems at Lehman Brothers and they weren't disclosed, doesn't it make it difficult for the SEC Enforcement Division to come back and bring action against Lehman Brothers? They were there. They saw it. Yeah, I think that that's definitely an impediment to a potential case. And certainly, if you go before a jury, the defense lawyers can make a big point about the fact that you were there, you knew about it, why didn't you do anything at the time, now you're coming after them. In fact, former Lehman CEO Richard Fold seemed to be trying out that defense when he testified before Congress in 2008. Throughout 2008, the SEC and the Federal Reserve conducted regular and at times daily oversight of our business and our balance sheet. They saw what we saw in real time. Let's just assume for a moment that Anton Volukas' findings are true. I mean, isn't this just a free ticket for executives to say, well, look, you know, Lehman did so and so and nothing happened to them? Right. No, I think absolutely that's a, a serious problem. I mean, obviously, there has been a tremendous financial crisis. The people who engaged in improper behavior need to be punished. I think it's critical for the SEC to go after not just companies but also individuals where they have the evidence to do so. When Lehman's bankruptcy was finally settled, there were claims against it for $370 billion. The creditors settled for about 20 cents on the dollar. Former CEO Richard Fold now runs a consulting business in Manhattan. He lost most of his fortune and is embroiled in a raft of litigation, but is still a wealthy man. Most of his senior colleagues at Lehman have landed on their feet. Ernst & Young, Lehman's accounting firm, is now being sued by New York State for aiding and abetting a fraud. And Matthew Lee, the senior accountant who blew the whistle at Lehman, is still looking for work unconvinced that much has changed in the world of finance over the last four years. You know, the entrepreneurs of Wall Street are continually getting more and more sophisticated, and they don't necessarily want regulators or audit auditors to fully understand what they're doing. Do you believe the balance sheets of big Wall Street firms, if you read them now? These numbers are so big and the financial instruments are so complex that, you know, I, I, nobody stands a chance, really, of understanding. I'd have more fun investing in crap tables in Las Vegas than... Uh, Wall Street firms.